And welcome to Jack Dobson's Insider Racing News with Scott Allen. And before we get started tonight, I thought it would be a good idea that we took a second and give our condolences and thoughts and prayers out to Steve Burns' family. Steve passed Absolutely. away today, and uh, uh, he was really a, a first-class act as far as I'm concerned as an announcer. And I would totally agree. And he he light on. he had everybody i mean i mean i was they were talking about it today as i was coming down the road talking about his his relationship with dale earnhardt and i mean everybody had this thing with well him. respected in yeah he was i mean he was he was above and beyond and i had the pleasure of meeting him on two occasions um one time was in martinsville at uh on the on the front straightaway there during the race he come and stood beside me and we kind of bumped each other, and he looked at me and he says, "I ain't mean to hit you." He said, "But I'm just a little bit too big for you standing here." With <laughs> and we we kind of carried on a conversation because he went and I said, "That's my son over there." He asked me why, who I was with, and I, that's my son right there. And I mean, you know, then from then on, I could pass him in the garage, and he would wave at me. I don't know if he knew who I was. I really mm. don't. I mean, you know, maybe he did remember, but, you know. And then the next time was in the media center at Martinsville. Mm. He came in and sat beside me. I was in the back of the room just kind of sitting there. This was a couple years ago. And he come and just kind of sat down beside me and just started a conversation. You know, mm. just what's going on. So I really, you know, we our thoughts and prayers go out to him. Uh, I know he had a young 12-year-old son. Yeah. And uh, I hate it for him. And uh, But he's in a better place now from what I understand. And uh, Yeah, it, it was so it, – it, to see him, some of the pictures and stuff he posted, that he was still smiling oh, yeah. and, and, and tweeting. And, and it was hard to believe that, you know, he's suffering that much and still be smiling. And, and, and watched it every out. minute of the race. Sunday. Yeah, I mean, even with the delay, he watched the race. They said, and he even said he didn't miss a bit of it. Mm. I know? mean, that's amazing. But and you know, and, and, and what one, a way to go out. I mean, well, you know, I was thinking about it. I would, and 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 I think uh, I know you probably listen to serious like I do sometimes. But I'm, I was riding down the road, and they were talking about, wouldn't it be great for people like like he got to see how much people thought of him mm -hmm. before he passed away. Right. Instead of after he passed away, right. to, you know, just to, to be in that situation, and and it was even fitting that they said that it went all day long because it extended it even more, you know. Yeah, so I think it, it, it trended there for a while. And he, he was, was the number two trend in the country. Yeah. And I understand today. Uh, I understand today he is also the number one or two trend today also. So. Uh, but you know he was he was a great guy. I know Daryl Walter. I mean him and Daryl Walter were tight. Yeah. Because Daryl he had a, a show that he did with Daryl, mm. and uh, I've even got Daryl's video. Oh really? And and he's he he is the anchor on the on the video. He does the narrating. Mm. So it's really cool. So that's the bad news for today. I mean that was really that yeah. was really a tough. Well, I thought some prayers go out to those guys. Um, but it was a great race. I oh, mean, yeah, it was a wonderful race. Uh, I mean, you had – it was so great to see a bunch of the guys that were running well uh, had a chance at their first win ever. I mean, look, the 51, I mean, uh, eighth Justin place, Allgray, eighth, eighth place finish. Ran well. I mean, poor Austin Dillon. I mean, he was running third there, and, they, and I'm sure everybody talked about how many caution laps they ran there. I do think that was a little ridiculous. Uh, and who knows what he had a shot at on a restart. Yep. Although he was going to be on the bottom, he was third. But him and Newman running third and fourth there and had to pit for gas. Um, Kurt Busch, man. I mean, Kurt, I think he was going to be the one that was going to win that race. I think so, too. He was he was above and beyond. He, him and Harvick were, were right there, neck and neck, most of the race. And, boy, Harvick really got a bad deal. <laughs> I mean, he, he did. But he's won a couple of races, and, and poor Kurt hasn't won. He should have won that one race and was a California. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the caution came out at the end, and he, he didn't end up winning the race. I think he was the one, even though he pitted, he come out third, he come out sixth, and it was on the outside. He had a great run, and he was mowing those guys down until he just couldn't, you know, and 
Man, yeah. I was like, God, man. And I'll tell you, and, and, and Jeff Gordon coming back from two laps now yeah. to get to get a third-place finish. Uh, Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> with a tore up base, with that base car. car. And the stuff he went through in that race and still come home second yeah. is unbelievable. I uh, mean, that's uh, – Our buddy Matt Benedetto. The I, Benedetto, uh, 23rd. Yeah. Had a, a shout I mean, out to him. And had a great qualifying effort. I mean, one of the best qualifying efforts. Where, that, did, where did he end up? I think he was like he he made it into the second round. Of okay. The, I think he was like twentieth. Yeah, the start. And, and considering those guys, uh, and we'll see what you know. We have JJ coming on the show later, and that's his teammate. And those guys don't have great equipment compared to what they're the, running the, against. So you know. I think some people don't understand the difference in quality of, of cars. And much to Al Pierce's chagrin, Danica got another top ten. <laughs> <laughs> set, mean, a record, set a top ten record. That was a big to do. But she did run well. I mean, you got to give oh, it. Yeah, and Tony she, ran well. And thank God for him, man. I think he's about ready to blow his head off. But things are just not. Sometimes things just don't seem no. to go right. And you just got to work through it. Um, but Tony had a good run. Um, but there was a lot of guys that up there that, that normally you don't see that were up there running well. It was good well. to see them up there, and, mm -hmm. and, and I'm always partial to that 51. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I will always be partial to the 51. And Justin Allgaier and all those guys down there in Spartanburg. Are they still down there? Yeah, they're still in Spartanburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if I introduced you to Kyle, the tire guy. For 51, he was standing there in front of the media center at Martinsville doing the tires. You don't usually introduce me. I try people. not to. I try, I try not to let everybody know we're together. But, <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, that's a big deal for them because uh, major announcement coming next week. Yeah, major, major? announcement coming next right, week. Well, let's let's get yeah. Let's before do we get that. too far. We got this Under Armour, courtesy of the Zim's Foundation. It's a book bag. So if you go to our YouTube videos like them make a comment tell us how you like our videos and we'll pick one of them and we'll mail this to you or we'll get jack to deliver he's got nothing else to do he's retired but uh Where'd this is go? a nice well hey it's personal delivery and if you want it devalued we can autograph it and make it worth less um, but it's a great book bag we got a f several items from the zims foundation we got some nice uh under armor shirt maybe we'll give away next year next week um we're going to do this one this week so if you want a nice Under Armour book bag, go to our YouTube channels that we'll uh, we'll post later on Facebook uh, tonight or first thing in the morning. But please go to the videos, like them, and uh, make a comment. Tell us what you think about our shows, whether good or bad. And we're going to pick somebody, and, and we'll mail this to you, or uh, Jack will deliver it. And hopefully, along the line, we have gotten ourselves pretty much ironed out with some of our problems that we've had with our cameras and getting used to it neither one of us are very well he's more tech savvy than i am but i thought you were gonna say smart no, right. i'm not gonna go smart but uh anyway <laughs> i think we got it out and, and we would like to hear what you got to say what you think and what you would like for us to do we could we you know we could come up with some things and uh, yeah we're always open long, to some long, ideas as long as we're into that type of frame of mind we've also entered into a thing with uh langley speedway we're going to do a langley speedway section or a segment on every show to spotlight a driver from Langley Speedway. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a late model driver. It could yeah. be a wing champ driver. I got a chance of being a guest on the show. <laughs> and it could be a wing champ driver. It could be, uh, I think they still run the trucks. Do they still run the little trucks out there? You know, I don't think so. Uh, well, okay. I, I don't remember, but they got the, the, the Pro sort six. of mini socks, the Pro 6. We had Cody on last week that runs at Langley Speedway. We had Bill Mullis the, the prior week. Um, but it, it's going to be a great relationship with those guys and, and to have some local talent. Uh, it, it's good for us it, 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 to be able to bring something to the show that's from right here where we, we can see what they're doing and, and be a part of. Tonight, Danny Edwards Jr. is going to be on the show. Been around a long time with late models. We raced with him back in the day. Not me personally. I worked on some late models then. Um, but our guest for tonight, just kind of give a – say we're going to have Cliff Champion. Um, some of you may know Bill Champion at Race Cup. And Bill was a crew chief and a crew member for years, yep. and now he's in the kind of the – luxury boat business um but we'll catch up with him um with uh bill and then we got jj yaley at 7 30. uh i mean i don't think we have to explain who jj yaley is he's the driver of the 23 dr pepper cup car 
Uh, then we have Jason Rainer. Reiner. Reiner. Yeah, I can't talk. Uh, he's the spotter for Chase Elliott in the Nationwide Series, and I guess he's going to be No, going... he's not in Nationwide. He does no. only the Cup stuff. He's doing only the Cup stuff this year. Maybe I can figure out how I can get my, give him my application so I can get one of these spotting gigs because Jason's <laughs> got it made. I mean, um, but hey. The, or these guys got it made. The, and then last, we're going to have Danny Edwards Jr. in our Langley Speedway segment. And, hey, Jason got it going on. He, and, and he's got it hooked up with the right guy. For the future. For, yeah. I mean, as long as the, the, for the future. relationship works well, it, it could be a long time, a long marriage, per se, because that's kind of what it is. So, kind of yeah. like us. We're kind of like a, like a marriage. <laughs> well, you had to go that way, didn't you? <laughs> I wasn't going that way. But anyway, um, but anyway, if you well, want, to, want to hear somebody that you would like to have on the show, uh, we can try to get them on. I mean, we can't make promises, but we can try to get them on. Um, we got some, I got some guys coming next week. We're going to have a guy that's done some dirt racing next week. And, and we, we're, we want to do a little bit of everything. We don't want to stay right here, but we will do Langley Speedway every week. But, you know, we yeah. don't want to. I, I mean, even if, if, if somebody out there wants to make an announcement on our show, maybe something, oh, contact yeah. one of us, and maybe something we could do. Be more than glad to work any way we can to help anybody out. So that's where we are with that. Mm -hmm. uh, we done talked about the, the cup race. Uh, Joey Logano won the Xfinity race. Kyle Benjamin, who will be with us next week, won the K and N race mm -hmm. at, at Bristol last week. And um, Cody Carlton won both races at the arena races last so week. Now he's got 15 wins. Now he's got the 15. So when you Fif read 15 last week, he didn't have them. He does now. And of course, he point blank told Man. us he was going to have them anyway. 15 out of 19. <laughs> That is unbelievable. Or 18, so I guess eight, next 18. week, I guess next week at the arena race on Thursday night, or this this week mm -hmm. now on Thursday, Thursday night, night, the championship is a foregone conclusion. Oh, he's already won. He's got it. There's no way possible he can lose it. Okay. Well, with, with Perlman wrecking uh, late in the race in the A main, he didn't race the top dog. So I think Cody's got a 36 point lead. It's probably the best season ever in arena race, and I don't think anybody has won that many races. Hasn't won that many races in a row, and they have that big of a lead. And I mean, I gotta give it to him. On top of having a 36-point lead, he did get a 10-point deduction. So, without that deduction, he would have a 46-point lead. So he doesn't have to race Thursday to win the championship. He's already the champion, and we'd like to congratulate him because he's had a dream season. Yeah, I uh, mean, he's one of our favorites. We we, we kind of like. Uh, well, I kind of like Cody. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. What about, I thought that was your favorite arena car driver. Cody is always <laughs> one of my favorite drivers. Uh, now, Cody does a great job. He, and, you know, he's very matured this year so far as yeah. driving, and it's, it's been fun to watch. Um, he is a great kid, and he's still, I mean, he's not really a kid anymore, but he's a kid to, well, and, he's a kid to me, probably a grandkid to you, but he, he's a great guy. <laughs> he's, a, he's a great guy, and I've enjoyed Working with him the last few years, and I appreciate him and Graham's help. Uh, and, and what about uh, Camden Testament? Didn't he finish second this week? Yeah, after he flipped me over. <laughs> well, your friend's off the track. You're not on the track. So. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, I, I went to him after the, after the race. I put my arm around, kind of like the, the old Dale Senior. I'm like, boy, if I didn't know that you didn't do that on purpose, I'd I'd have put you over the fence. Uh, then on after that. Uh, and his dad come over, which I, you know, I, mean, I certainly don't think he would have did that on purpose. No, uh, I don't but think so. uh, I hated it. Uh, and then we got the body tore up and ended up having to park, and and it was just a, it was a terrible night. And fortunately, we can like, make a major announcement. I'm not gonna run Thursday. I'm just saving my luck. Not gonna run Thursday. But are you gonna be there Thursday? I don't. It depends on how much work I got here to do. We we're definitely going up Thursday night. I'm taking the camper, and, we're, and we'll be at Richmond this weekend um, for the Cup race. But uh, so far as uh, I'm gonna try to, if I can get out of here early enough to get up there and set my camper, I'm gonna come over to the arena race and and watch it. And, and you know, they're all my friends, man. Yeah, I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there Thursday. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over there. I want to see Cody get the championship. Maybe, Are you uh, officially? Is the boss lady going with you? Uh, probably not Thursday because she has to work. Mm. So uh, I probably won't have her with me. Um, probably because she has to work Thursday and Friday. I, mean, I don't have to. Somebody's got to work. What's that supposed to mean? 
I mean, we somebody's got to work go. the house. Here we, you just keep firing them shots at me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we kid because we care. <laughs> I'm retired. I don't have to work on Thursday and Friday. <laughs> But when I do, be nice, uh, but when I do have to work, I have to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Cliff calling us, or we got to? He's call supposed Cliff? to call us. Okay, so we're waiting on uh, Cliff Champion. I think it'd be kind of interesting to him uh, some of those old stories because uh, yeah. in racing, he's got. I mean, he's got the tie to uh, the late Benny Parsons. Um, I even think it was with Colwicky for a little while too, but I'm not. I'm not. He might be friends with our buddy Joe. Then I'm sure him and Joe was probably, especially back then, raced together. Yeah, may have, yeah, may have been. Um, but it, 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 I think it'd be funny. Uh, I wonder who. Uh, I'm sure Ricky Rudd, being his dad, is Bill Champion, and that's who Ricky Rudd got his first ride when I think Ricky went from racing go-karts to cup <laughs> I don't yeah. think there was any in between I'm sending him a message now tell him go ahead and give us a call yeah we're gonna be up on the chip all night yeah we got to we got it we got we to go just rolling we are got to we got to go and uh, um, while we're waiting um, good night at the free what a bad night for you but good night for Cody at the arena races I understand the late model race at Langley Saturday night was a good one. Uh, Lee Pulliam and Danny or and Greg Edwards. Uh, suppose that was a that was a was a good race. I didn't see it. I just heard bits and pieces of it. But uh, hey, that'd be you know we're gonna have Danny on here tonight and hear what he's got to say. Yeah, I mean Danny. Danny's won a few championships at Langley Speedway. Um, our buddy from Arena Racing. Uh, damn, I can see his face. And I can't think of his name. Uh, Tyler Hughes, he's going to run full time at Langley Speedway in the late model division. Uh, I'm not can't remember who the team is, but it's a really good team up north, and and they're coming down. And he was running second, and I don't know who got into him, but he they're putting a snout on his car uh, this week. Oh, I guess we're supposed to call him now. Hmm. All right, he I thought we, he was going to call me, but uh, we got you. I mean. We're going to work them with. Hey, what can I say? We're going. We, we're going to get it. We're going. Not technically savvy. Yeah, <laughs> that's one way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Cliff Champion. How you doing? This is Jack Dawson. How's it going? Hi, Jack. How you doing? I'm doing good. Joining us now on the show is Cliff Champion, and uh, welcome to the Jack Dawson Insider Racing News with Scott Allen and and Jack here. And first of all, Cliff, a lot, a lot of people up in this area know the name Champion, but give us a little background on Cliff Champion and tell us, you know, how you were, how, what all you've done in racing. Well, I, I'll tell you what, Jack. I, uh, I will just second first. I'd like to uh, send my condolences out to the uh, Burns family. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Steve and his family. Right there. He was a really good guy. And I know a lot of people have raced him, so I'd like to send my condolences to uh, Chad and his, and his son, Rush, right there. But, uh, the name Champion, uh, you know, of course, a lot of people, you know, from years ago heard of Bill Champion. Right. They raced the number 10 for many years on, on the circuit right there. A lot of people don't know that uh, Bill Champion lived across the street from Jeff Ledley. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't know that either. And, uh, actually, his daughter sent me a picture of uh, Bill Champion and Joe Weatherly uh, from probably back in the 50s, maybe the 60s, raced in motorcycles. I'd say in the 50s because they looked really young, and they were standing there in Harley Davidson skirts. They were both teen riders for Harley Davidson back then. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, and I, I, I knew he raced, but I didn't know that him and, uh, I know him and Joe Weatherly were good friends. Like I said, he lived across the street from each other. But uh, that's kind of how they all got into racing. And, and, and with your dad, I mean, with Bill being in the racing, that's how you got in. Uh, tell us what all you, what, what, you know, I know you work with Benny Parsons. Tell us some of the drivers you work with. Well, I started out with, uh, with Bill. Actually, you know, the Rudd family lived about two blocks from me. My dad knew Ricky's dad. And uh, remember that one day he wanted to build me, a, I wanted to build one of the fiberglass duty buggies, and Ricky's brother, AJ, already had one. So we went by there and talked to him, and AJ and I became close friends. And, uh, well, we were about inseparable since then. 
the uh, Ricky and I, his brother, AJ and I are like brothers right there. He wanted to go watch the uh, Daytona race. Ricky's brother did. And uh, I said, I'm not going there. That's like watching paint dry. I ain't going to have to sit in the stands. <laughs> and, uh, he said, well, why don't you call your cousin and see if he can get us in? So I called Bill. And it was a 1974 uh, QI race, the Firecracker 400. And he said, yeah, I'll get them. And we went down there and uh, started uh, walking. And the next thing you know, we were there helping Bill with the car. And he offered me a job uh, that night back at the motel. So uh, next thing you know, it was my 21st birthday when I was down there. And I started racing. And uh, AJ was coming and helping me change tires on the weekend. And, uh, you know, work on the cars sometime at night. And then the next year, we talked Bill into letting Ricky drive the car. So that's pretty much how we got started. Yeah. Right you, there. But then, uh, you, So you went in, in and basically you the you guys are the one who got Ricky started in, in Cup altogether. I mean, because he went straight into Cup. I mean, he, he went straight there. And, and um, that's when y'all got him started, really. Yeah, I was working for Bill. And um, Ricky and them, his dad actually bought a car, one of bought, bought Bill's old 71, I guess it was a Cyclone or whatever it was right there. And uh, we tried to take it to Daytona the next year. And it rained right there at qualifying, and we had to go out and, uh, you know, didn't have an air can right, but it was, a, it was a, one of those decisions where you had to go right then, and if it didn't rain, you know, then you ride the race, so we made a stop and... and Anyway, it rained, we didn't make the race. So we came home, and uh, never ran the car again. We ended up talking Bill and letting him drive his car. So so how, how did it go between, there was always a story that Ricky and AJ, they both had a chance to drive the car, and, and Ricky dra- rode, drove faster than, than AJ, and that's how Ricky ended up getting a ride? Yeah. Uh, Bill almost took the car over, and I believe it was over at Langley. Right. But uh, we took a car somewhere and uh, let both of them practice in the car right there. And uh, AJ has always been as good a driver as Ricky. But uh, Ricky seemed to come more natural at it, where Ricky could jump in the car and within five laps, he was ready to run just as fast as Bill. Mm. And AJ, you know, it'd take him about 10 laps. You know, he was just, he could go as fast. But he just, it took him a little while to get there. Ricky had just seemed to come natural to him. So, uh, you know, he, he got to drive, and uh, we ended up working on the car. And, uh, so where did your career go after that, after the after Ricky Rudd? I'm, I know you were with Benny Parsons, and I know that had to be, that had to be a treat to work with Benny Parsons. It was. It was. Um, I guess after I, I worked with uh, Bill and Ricky, for a while, and then when that fell apart, they parted away, and I went to work for James Hilton. And luckily for me, uh, that happened to me because James taught me a lot. James is a really good, a good mechanic, great mechanic, good driver. Yeah. But he taught me how to put a car together that would last. Um, when I worked for, for James, you know, he didn't have much money back then, and uh, you know, just a, a throw together crew, uh, guys up in the nighttime on the weekends, and uh, we finished third in the points. Uh, we only saw out of two races. We didn't take two races. We lost. But we were trying a new clutch that they came out with, and the clutch came apart in the race. And then at Talladega, we, uh, there was a wreck in front, and James ended up T-boning Marty Robbins right in the driver's door <laughs> right there at Talladega. So uh, that was the only two races we didn't finish all year. Wow. But I, anyway, I worked with, uh, I worked with uh, James, and I came back home. Was Ricky and him, and, uh, and then I went to work for Stillers. I went to work for Richard Stillers, and then um, at, uh, about the middle way through the year, Ricky and him were up for Rookie of the Year, and the 77 right there, and uh, I felt like they needed me home, and really my loyalty was bad, so I left Richard that came home to Ricky and him about midway through the season to the Rudd family, and uh, we won Rookie of the Year that year, and then before long, yeah, they kind of ran out of money. Right there, really, you know, it was hard to run back then. All we had was the, the junk yard itself, you know, the auto yeah. yard. Yeah. Bringing in the money for sponsor, didn't really have a sponsor. So, uh, Ricky luckily got to ride for, with Judy Donnelly, and we all kind of split our ways right then. I went to work in, uh, 79 for Grant Adcox, and that kind of led my, 
went the way to uh, a motor being built by Waddell Wilson. So at the end of 79, uh, Grant, his money was tightening up over the dealership with his dad and stuff like that. They needed to sit out a year or something, and uh, Waddell hired me over there with Buddy Baker uh, with the Warren Rainier and Harry Rainier team over what? there. So I went there, and we won the very first race. Uh, of course, I was just a mechanic just starting out over there. First big team I'd been with, and I went to Daytona and won the Daytona 500. Probably uh, one of the big moments of my life and put it right there. That was really something for me. So who who was your favorite time so far as your driver that you worked with that you enjoyed the most? Um, you know, it's hard to say. There hadn't been anybody that I really didn't enjoy with. I mean, I could find good things to say about everybody. I mean, Buddy Baker, uh, I enjoyed working with him. Yeah, he was intense. And stuff. Uh, Richard Stewart, he was a lot of fun to work with. Um, I mean, all of them. Benny, you know, Benny was a good guy. Uh, everybody, really. I mean, it was probably more fun work with Ricky just because, of, you know, they're like family to me. Right. Uh, so that was probably the most, you know, you, you feel the most emotional contact right there because of a close bond. How much involvement now do you have around the racing? Do you get around to see it or? Are you are you just completely out all together, or how do you, what do you do now with that? Well, I got out in two thousand, and I started a. I just kind of got burned out. You know, racing changed a lot, and uh, like I tell people, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with NASCAR, but it's just it wasn't what I signed up for. When I signed up, and when I started, it was fun. Mm-hmm. You know, you all came back to the motel, and we all pile and rain and go to movies or go to a dance club or go go kart racing, the local go kart track or something, and just everybody had fun. And uh, it's gotten so serious with all the money and stuff that it just uh, it, it, it turned into a bigger job. I never wanted a bigger job. Right, it, it wasn't as fun. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I enjoyed to have fun. I enjoyed it. I had fun, and when it quit being fun to me, I got out. And I uh, started a boat business. I had a starter boat. I had an 80 foot and then a 100 foot starter boat business here on the lake uh, up until uh, 2014. And then uh, then I started with an old friend of mine uh, that I met over Hendrix Motorsports when I was working over at Jeff Gordon's. And uh, Nick Menudia, he's got a company called uh, Nick's Tricks. And we rebuild and restore old uh, 66 to 77 model Broncos mm. for uh, that. Sort of about there, there. They're the high end cars. I mean, they're all eighty to one hundred thousand dollars. You know, these these things we just wanted to buy back in August, so uh, they go all over the world. Yeah, I mean, I, I see the I picture. Yeah, I see the boat pictures on your Facebook page, and man, those things are nice. Yeah, we uh, we really enjoyed boat business. I, I I enjoyed that for a while, but uh, yeah, it, it didn't work out. We we had one in two thousand eight. Our eighty footer. We were at the dock. Uh, Still refueling them at the end of a starter right there, and uh, uh, the boat exploded during the fuel process and actually killed the boy that was working for me that was fueling the boat right there. And uh, so okay. we kind of lost a lot right there. Got another boat, the 100 footer, back in uh, 2009 uh, uh, right there in August. That uh, we just we had a hard time getting our permits back and doing things because we had our accident and stuff. But we finally just had to get out of the business. Dang. Well, Cliff, it was nice. To, we, we're glad we were able to get you on the show and have a few minutes with you. And, and we've got a lot. We got a, a lot of things going on tonight with the with Steve um, Steve Burns passing away, and we got some extra guests on here tonight. But we appreciate you spending some time with us. Yeah. Hopefully, we can get you back on real soon, and maybe I can run into you sometime around the Charlotte area. Well. Anytime you're there, you just give me a holler. Be glad to talk to you, and thanks for having me. And uh, I hope everybody else enjoys your Thursday night. All right, we appreciate Thank it. Thank you a lot, man. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. So we we were wrong on everything there. <laughs> pretty much everything there. But I read it on the thing there that it it, it was his, you know. It was his. Well, I didn't read it anywhere. I just assumed. I read it over here. But, but I guess it was his, it's his cousin. Well, yeah, now I know that. But <laughs> <laughs> it was still pretty cool. And I'd always heard that story about Ricky and, and AJ going to test uh, at Langley Speedway, and, and, and Ricky ran faster, so Ricky got the job. And I don't know if AJ 
drove before that that I know of. But I don't think so. I don't think. Um, you, but I know you know Ricky went from go karts racing his go karts that go really fast, like out on the West Coast and or in the Midwest and stuff that you practically lay down and run a hundred miles an hour. Um, back then it was pretty fast in a cart. Not that we're not still fast now, but. Uh, and went straight to cup. <laughs> well, I've been down to uh, the Rudd Junkyard or mm-hmm. Salvage Yard or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I, matter of fact, that's where I got a lot of stuff when I was racing. I'm gonna go there and pick up. You probably junk. needed stuff. Huh? Uh, well, I needed. Yeah, there's a lot of times I did. But uh, went and talked to him, and he was uh, he was always funny. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I I was just as good as Ricky, but I just didn't have the, you know he would he would. But then and then I think Jason, I don't know if you remember Jason, mm-hmm. His, you know, AJ's AJ's son. AJ's son. I, mm-hmm. Now he was he was a talent, just didn't have uh, put it all together to to move on. I think he had like two nationwide starts or whatever. Yeah. It, it, he just didn't get the opportunities, uh, I think, and it's it's hard. I mean, there's a drivers are a dime a dozen. Yeah, but I remember I remember out at Southampton they had what they called the chain race. Yeah, I've never seen one. No, well, I take I, that back. I have seen they used to run them at Langley a couple of times. I, I, went, I would love to get in one of them and do that. I went to the chain race, and they had these three cars out there. <laughs> and I was sitting in the stands now. Right. Well, you gotta explain what a chain race is. It's Three cars chained together. The front car has the steering. The and middle the car and has the has an engine. No brakes. No brakes. The rear car has the brakes. Right. The middle car has nothing. He's just along for the ride. And so whatever happens there, <laughs> that middle car is it's hugely entertaining. It is really entertaining. But anyway, we went to Southampton to, and I was just happened to be in the stands beside the Ruds. Okay. Right beside. Uh, AJ's dad and all of them were sitting there. You want to send AJ a message on the calls? And uh, I was sitting beside them, and they announced these three drivers in this thing, but one of them was a made-up name. Okay? So everybody's sitting there enjoying the chain race, and all of a sudden this car comes down through there, and the front car somehow banged the wall, the back car broke loose, and the car in the middle went tumbling. <laughs> and the guy in the middle car was Jason Rudd. Oh, really? <laughs> and, and, and Jason was running the late model race. And they, he said, wait a minute now. I mean, he had a chance to win the championship. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the real. Everybody, everybody got hot, man. <laughs> What's he doing out there in that chamber? He they, are, they are hugely fun to watch. I would love to do it. I don't know if I'd want to be the driver or the brake guy. I don't want to be in the middle. I ain't going to be in the middle, I can tell you that. <laughs> I mean, just to get Because the guy in the front ain't got nothing to lose. He can just drive it as deep as you want. Because you know the guy in the back. It's like, it, they come off the corner and goes, cling, 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 cling. You remember the old Enduros? Yeah. We used to have them at Southampton. They would start 100 cars. Oh, yeah. They used to have them in, in Langley, in, man. In Enduros. And we had uh, the guy that I was hanging around with. Um had an he had like two or three enduro cars in the enduro race mm-hmm. and he put one of his employees in there you can make, if you could win it you can make some money in an enduro race and make uh, good money he put one of his employees and his employee had never been behind the wheel <laughs> on nothing i mean it how was, did he do um you know, all you gotta do is survive well that's basically all he did and he run up around the wall all the way around the track and everybody was trying to push him in to try to get him to try to stop him. He managed to make maybe seven or eight laps, and nobody touched him. Hmm. Yeah, and, and enduro race is definitely a lot of – it's very entertaining. I would love to run one of those, too. They used to come in, I think, the first time. I think I was, like, 17, and, and I was working for Barry Strathman, and, and he ran late model, and his girlfriend ran the powder puff enduro race. Mm-hmm. Of course, they had to, that first, and then we watched the regular enduro. And when the cars crashed and they just stopped racing, I'm like, what's going on? And they left it on the racetrack. Well, now I think over Langley they have something like that, but they have, like, I don't know how many barrels of soapy water that if you run into them, then it knocks it all over the racetrack. So then it just makes it – <laughs> Well, I don't know what the deal is with uh, JJ, but uh, I'll just send him a message. Hopefully, we'll find out something. But somebody should have turned the light on. 
Yeah, that might have been a good idea. Just, you know, I don't like being in the dark with you. <laughs> Turn it on real quick. So we're waiting on the phone call from J.J. Yaley, the 23 Dr. Pepper car for BK Racing. Um, they had a, uh, they didn't have such a good run the other night either. You can tell we're a low budget team here. I mean, a low budget operation here. Uh, the co-pilot had to go turn the lights on. <laughs> yeah, and we gotta ask JJ about Hudson. Oh yeah. I'm, oh, that's gonna be a funny story. If you, you ever heard, if anybody, I mean, I'm sure everybody that watches the show or will watch the show will know Hudson Hall. Um, <laughs> and he was spot for JJ. We'll let JJ tell the story but it's going to be funny and we had a good Call time three, one. all right here we go Two, nine, five, eight, one, nine, now join us on the show is jj yaley how you doing jj i'm doing fine oh uh, we're glad to have you with us tonight all right how's everything down your way oh it's uh, it's going uh, very nice here so it's nice and clear no rain well, good. I mean, you know, I understand y'all had some some storms yesterday. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of rain, but that's good. I've washed all the lawn away and made all the grass nice and green. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna start this. We're gonna start this off with something we've been talking about for <laughs> the last little bit. You you know Hudson Hall, I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, he was telling they were they were telling us a story about <laughs> him spotting for you. Uh, yeah. I, I, that didn't turn out too good. <laughs> He's already laughing. Uh, well, no, no, I thought it was a fantastic spot. Even at the top of it long, which was always good. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, uh, he didn't run me into uh, any pork race cars, so as a spotter, he was successful. He was successful. <laughs> but did, 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 we, did we have any problems with the stuttering? I mean, could, I, mean I tease him about the stuttering now. <laughs> No, we never we had the <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he was telling us the story. We were just cracking up. He said, "You got to get JJ to tell you the story." Uh, so, how are things down at BK Racing, and how's everything working out? It, it looked like Matt had a good run this week. Tell us a little bit about your run down at Bristol. Um, we uh, we struggled quite a bit. Uh, we struggled since we came off the truck. Uh, the car that we took to Bristol. Uh, as a car that I ran once last year at Homestead, uh, and I believe that Cole Witt ran uh, as a brand new car at Charlotte. And, uh, it's a newer style clip, some things we try different with it, and uh, unfortunately, it just doesn't, uh, this doesn't really work very well. We, we put, I don't know, 10 different setups. I know that Joe Williams, the crew chief, uh, and Jeff, and all the guys at BK, uh, thought very hard, you know, we, we made a lot of changes. We had the same, same or, or the similar setup as what uh, my other two teammates had and just really, really struggled with it. So, uh, you know, we had some circumstances during the race that I uh, really took the kind of condition right off the get-go. You know, we got uh, the lucky dog uh, at last 25 during the race, and then uh, NASCAR, you know, gave me clearance to wave around, came down the pit to put tires on it. And they threw the green uh, before we left the road, so we went from getting back on the lead lap to losing two laps. So uh, it was pretty much an uphill struggle from that point. We had uh, a couple tires come loose on the right rear, which uh, really kind of was a nail in the coffin for us having uh, a, a good day. Uh, you know, you know, at the end of the race, you know, we ended up thirty seconds. Uh, you know, luckily that attrition at the end that uh, helped us uh, out with a little bit of a, a decent point day, but. All in all, we just really uh, didn't have a very good time up there, Bristol. The the the, the root, new rules on pit road, and they're not monitoring the lug nuts. That seems to be a little bit of an issue right now. I mean, a lot of guys are having problems with lug nuts and stuff. How 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 are they? I know your guys probably practice that to make sure they get everything done. But I'm hearing there's guys practicing just putting four on and whatever. What is your opinion on all that? Well, I'm sure that you know, the, the bigger teams that don't have the latest race equipment are, are able to do that and not have any issues. You know, the, the problem that we were having uh, with our loose tire issue was uh, one of our rear changers uh, used to be a Bensky, and they used a different style of gun than the equipment that, that we have. Now, they use a lot 
larger OD and IV hoses with a lot higher pressure. And because it just doesn't have the, uh, the same kind of ability to get the wheel torque in a high enough capacity. And as your loads are so high in a place like Dover and Bristol that, you know, up till now we haven't had any issues just because we haven't been in the racetrack except with no loads because the banking is. Uh, you know, the, the one tire, it came loose in about 15 laps. Uh, the second one, as soon as we came in and changed that tire, uh, came loose to my feet. You know, they made a change to it for a regular style. And we're done, and we didn't have any issues the rest of the day. So, uh, again, it cost us a ton of laps, and, you know, all those stops were under green. And, uh, you know, it, at the end of the day, it was, you know, five or six positions that you hate to give up uh, because of, you know, something that was kind of overlooked. Hmm. Well, now I don't know what kind of what kind of thing you got with your cars. What are you What are you looking at as far as this year with the new the new packages on these cars and everything? Is it that much different than what you what you've seen in the past? And how close is it to your um, your Xfinity car? Well, you know, I mean, there's there's a similarity in the way that the two drive. You know, some of it comes from uh, you know, the, the horsepower and, you know, the, the amount of downforce that the cars have. You know, the, uh, the cup cars this year, losing the horsepower, losing the downforce, you know, looking for a little bit less aero balance to make the cars harder to drive and a little bit more fall off, which, uh, you know, they've achieved. And, and you know, their, their goal is to make the cars race better to pack. And, you know, so far the racing has been really good. You know, I think they had some really tight battles, you know, through the entire race at Bristol, which... Uh, you know, we haven't had so much here in the last couple of years. So, you know, I think they've accomplished some things with the package. I know that some drivers really like it. And then, you know, there's guys you know, like Tony Stewart that really don't care much for it. So, you know, I know that they're still tweaking the package uh, as we continue on. I think for the uh, All-Star Race, they've, uh, they've considered running the 2016 package for that race, uh, which is even smaller spoilers and softer tires, so it'll be interesting to see how uh, these cars continue to evolve with the new rules package, but, you know, our sport changes so fast that, you know, set up that you might run at this, you know, the spring Bristol won't even be close to uh, to being competitive when we go back there in the fall. Huh. Pretty. So how, how is it over at BK Racing, because you're kind of the the most veteran driver there, does everybody sort of lean on you and go to you for advice and what they should do to the cars? Uh, you know, I mean, I try to be as helpful as I can. You know, with, uh, with Matt, you know, it seems like our setups are a little closer than, than what Jeff has when we go to the racetrack. Uh, you know, obviously we still kind of fight similar problems throughout the, uh, the race weekend, but, you know, Matt seems to be a little bit more forthcoming and can come over and ask him for help or some questions about the race that and how it may change. And, uh, you know, and obviously he's got some experience in the extended series, but uh, being a rookie, tough side, you know, he wants to, to get as much knowledge as he can. Mm -hmm. You know, with Jay, we'll sit a little bit about their setup, but, you know, he doesn't lean on me as much about, you know, what's going to happen with the race that and how it's going to change. So, you know, I'm sure he may be going somewhere, but we, we we try to communicate as much as we can uh, as drivers throughout the weekend, and then obviously the crew chief uh, and a lot of times kind of going over the things that they've, you know, found that made it far better and, you know, the, the negatives and, and the setup. Mm -hmm. Now, are, are, do you get into the setup side of cars? You know, like back in the day, we could talk about Rusty, how Rusty got involved in what springs were in a car, what cross, and so forth, or do you just try to give a lot of feedback? No, I mean, I, I spend a lot more time just giving feedback. You know, I, mm -hmm. I try not to be too limiting in what happens with the setup of the car. You know, I like to know exactly what's in the car at all times. Uh, you know, I, as a driver, there's some guys that really get too focused on a number. And, you know, these cars, I mean, you can have two completely different packages. And, and you know, we're talking a thousand pound different frame, which... You know, you have to be open to sometimes, and we've done it a couple times this year to where we've, you know, doubled the spring capacity on the right rear that, you know, scares you because you think, man, the car's going to spin out because it's going to have so much over spring. Right. And the car really not change much. You really change your mouth to make it nice to drive. So you have to kind of go ahead and open mind. And so, again, I, I like to know what's in the car, but not to keep too much time to change 
you can put water in there. Yeah, no, because sometimes, like you think, like you said, you say they're putting a twice the size spring in a right rear, and, and you already have the assumption it's either what it's going to do, and it may do something completely different. Exactly, and like uh, you know, these, these cars just and they seem to have so much grip, uh, you know, especially on new tires, and you know, tires fall off. They don't become you know super evil cars to have to drive. I mean, they become difficult. You definitely have to. Keep your elbows up and the wheel on the entire the entire way through a run, but uh, you know again because they are so much different than what we've had in the past, and you know I'm sure the horsepower loss comes a lot into play. I mean you take away you know almost 20 percent of your torque and horsepower, mm. that takes away a lot of that slip and slide and, and that you know that that thought in your mind where you're going to go down and jump on the throttle and spin the thing out because the cars just don't have that uh, that kind of torque and acceleration anymore. Now, I, I heard you mention Jeff earlier, and that has to be my buddy Jeff Kirkendall. <laughs> how, how in the world do you work with a guy like him? <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it's a very good bunch of guys we have over on the, uh, the 23, Dr. Pepper Bar. And, uh, you know, obviously we've kind of made some changes from last year. Some of the guys uh, switched from the... The car that I was driving, which was the 83, and you know, has kind of put together the senior team at, at the 23 car. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a perfect kind of balance because, you know, Bill Williams leans on, on, on Jeff quite a bit as well as, uh, Roy, our shop guy. And, you know, I mean, everyone gets along well. Everyone works very hard. You know, again, we are a, a relatively small team, and mm -hmm. because we are fielding three cars now on a weekly basis, uh, you know, I mean, it really spreads everyone pretty thin. So, you, know, you, you think of a, you know, some of these teams that have four cars and a thousand people would think the race that, uh, you know, I mean, we, we have three cars and we, you know, we basically have almost two groups of people trying to run three cars. So, uh, it makes it very tough. And then again, that's where uh, communication comes into, uh, into play in order to make things kind of work as quickly as possible. And you got a great car owner in Ron Devine. He is. Um, we've had him on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he 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 really loves the sport and loves mm -hmm. everything about it. And he seems to be a good guy to have as a car owner to try to get you stuff that you need. But you know, he doesn't quite have the budget everybody else has. Uh, he he is a super super nice guy. Uh, I love uh, driving for Ron. And uh, you know, he's, he's done some things for my daughter, for her uh, passions uh, in the past. And, you know, he just, he's got a huge heart. But, you know, he loves sports tremendously. And obviously, he wants to be successful at it. And, uh, you know, he's trying to do as much as he possibly can in order to achieve that. And, again, we're, you know, we're fighting some big budgets with some big teams. And, you know, every week we, we continue to get better. And I know that, uh, so that is his goal is to uh, make the team competitive on a weekly basis. And, you know, we have, we've shown that we can do that, but we need to get a little more consistent uh, in doing so, especially as an organization. You know, it'd be nice to be able to have, uh, you know, all three cars fighting for the better positions versus driving one car have a good run and, and maybe one of the other ones kind of struggle. So, you know, I think as we continue on here and, and everyone gets the car under, uh, under the belt and, you know, again, trying to keep up with the, the changing setup, uh, we need to find some consistency. Well, you got a good guy. I mean, I, I talk trash about Jeff Kirkendall a lot, and I, I talk trash to him when I see him. But uh, he he is a good guy. I mean, he really he knows his stuff, and I think you I think you you got a, a good core group of guys there that can. I think in time is gonna it's gonna build into something. Uh, no, absolutely. I mean, I have all the confidence in the world in these guys, and like I said, you know, for for being a small team, we we have got a lot of uh, a lot of the, the pieces and essentials that we need. Uh, you know, this year I've gotten a lot more help from TRD, which has been tremendous. And, and just, you know, trying to stay ahead of that curve. And, uh, you know, I know because of it, you know, we've gone to the racetrack a little bit more prepared than uh, maybe what BK Racing has been able to uh, in the past, even when, you know, there was more uh, more people at the racetrack and, and some of those things. So, you know, right, so we're, we're definitely moving in the right direction and uh, we're creeping up on, on getting better at those. Now, do you still do the? I, mean, I had to. I have to ask this question. Do you still do the dice thing in the in your car? Uh, <laughs> speed dice. Speed yeah. dice. Yeah, no, no. I still do. Still do speed dice. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, you know, on Twitter, and you know, throw two dice into uh, a plastic uh, little container, throw it in the uh, 
the cup holder, and uh, you know, it, it, some places we go, you know, it, it seems like the numbers never change, and uh, you know, the racetracks are pretty smooth. But now that these cars, you know, pretty much ride around like a low rider on a racetrack, and every time we go on a racetrack, we got a different number. So it, like I said, it's just you know, something fun to, to, to do for the fans, and you know, we always give away some signed uh, autographs. Uh, you know, if you have a hat or t-shirts or maybe a piece of uh, a wrinkled fender and you know, sometimes, you know, I may have given helmets and uniforms away, you know, the, the price is kind of changed depending on, on what I've got there in the inventory, but uh, again, it's just something fun to kind of do with the fans. No, I think it's a great idea because I always catch you tweeting about it and the speed dice, and it's it's pretty cool. It gives the fans uh, some type of connection to you and, and, and feel like they're involved. Right. So no, like I get a lot of a lot of fan participation. You know, I have a lot of people coming up to me and go, you know, what is the number? What's the number going to be? Uh, you know, and again, it's it, uh, we never fix it. You know, I joke it. Thank you, I used to throw other dice in there. They were either seven or eleven, but uh, <laughs> uh, we've we've since lost those dice somewhere. So now it's more or less a straight up deal, and and you know, we usually end up with ten to fifteen people a number, and then it just kind of comes to a random draw on any person that. Uh, going to uh, take home the prize. Well, J.J., we appreciate your time tonight. Hope you have a good race up in Richmond this weekend. Hopefully, we'll see you up there. And uh, I'll come by and introduce myself to you because yeah. I'd I, I really like to meet you. And, and I'm gonna, I have to come by there and give Jeff a hard time. So I, I, I'll see you up there. All right. That'll be awesome. I'll be there ready to roll. All right, man. Thanks, Thanks a lot for you. your time. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That was kind of fun. I, I, I think we could do more with him. But it is a pretty neat old speed dice thing. It's pretty cool. I know. And I've done it a couple times on his on his. Uh, Did you win? No. <laughs> but uh, I've done it a couple times with him and, uh, you know, on there. And uh, it, uh, I yeah, can't it, believe, it, it, you know, I, well, I'm going to have to tell uh, now, Kirkendall that you said something nice about him. Well, we don't need to tell him that much. I mean, because. You know, <laughs> I mean, he's going to see it. <laughs> Hmm. All right, Jason, I'm going to give you a call. Are you going to give me a call? I'll give you a call. Hmm. Yeah, he said he was watching, so don't talk bad about him. Yeah, I'm not going to talk bad about Jason right now. <laughs> hey, guys. Hello, Jason. How you doing, man? Pretty good. I just put on my phone here by the number of this, but I guess I'm to start off too late and... I heard your phone beeping when JJ was still on, so sorry about that. That's, no, not, a, that's not a problem at all. Uh, we just kind of run into a little uh, scheduling thing there where he got a little late and everything, but we appreciate you taking time to, to hang on and, and, and talk to us now. We appreciate all that. No, no problem. Glad you guys me on tonight. All right, we got Jason Reiner joining us on the show now. He's uh, a, a professional spotter, I guess is what we call you. <laughs> is, that, is that what we'd call you? Um, I believe it's spotter. I professional is uh, hit or miss sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel that. So who? Uh, I mean, I, we we know you you spotted for for Chase at at Martinsville. Um, are you are you spotting for anybody else during the season, or is is that just him for right now? Um, yeah, this year um, it's pretty much primarily Chase. Um, I recently signed to up to be back with the Bowman 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 who uh, was a wonderful last year. I was about the same point as called 9 Tanks last year. Uh, but uh, obviously, we get some kind of motorsports. Uh, some of the drive. Uh, we have some work. So I'll be working with these and all the races. They'll be popping the schedule this year. And I'm also helping out at uh, 9 Tanks races. Yeah, Xfinity over at uh, uh, Darren Motorsports. Cool. That's it. You, you, you got some, uh, you got some, some people to, to work with around there with all those guys. Now, you used to... Definitely. You used to spot for Clay Rogers, is that right? Well, yeah, I used to. I went to uh, in the past, and um, actually, I was up in Orange County with him last weekend at the uh, car store. Oh, okay. Uh, he ran a late model up there, and uh, he's planning on running a handful of races. Uh, again, the people late model, but he's also going to jump back. Uh, hopefully, in a couple car later on the year with uh, the Spirit Motorsports we drove for uh, last year. Oh, hmm. all right. Well, um, tell us a, tell us a little bit about how you got started with spotting. How did you get into that? To where you could, you know, where you became a spotter with different teams? Sure. Uh, well, basically, I mean, I kind of went on to play. Uh, he and I met uh, back in 2003 when I was moving from uh, Syracuse down to down to North Carolina. Uh, 
that it's due for a mutual friend. And uh, when I was down here initially, I, I hadn't started my new new position when I was the company I was going to work for, so I had some time to kill. So I ended up uh, traveling with him uh, back then. It was the Hooters Pro Cup Tour. Right. Uh, went to a few races in there. Learned, uh, learned a lot about the racing side. I've never really been in it before. Um, so traveled to you know, the Hooters Pro Cup Tour and also an uh, off weekend there. Uh, his little brother Brad was running uh, a late model stock at Concord, uh, uh, Concord Speedway. <laughs> you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay. Oh, okay. It sounded, it sounded like it clicked off on us here, and we were getting real panicky, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was it like to spot for Chase at Martinsville? And, I mean, he didn't have a, 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 a super race, but, I mean, he did run a, quite, a, a, quite a few laps. Mm -hmm. He got some experience. What was it like with him at Martinsville? Um, yeah, he's, he's great to work with. Uh, believe it or not, this is actually the second time I've got to work with Dave. Um, I got the opportunity last year to watch the fun when I was up there. Um, I saw the four cup car. Um, and then uh, on Saturday, uh, Big Earl was looking for uh, somebody to help out, so I was already up there, so they pulled me into uh, the bus stop and watch the fun. So that's the second time I got to work with him. So he's, he's super easy to work with. Um, he's a smart kid. He's, you know, he's, he's done so much in, in his short career. Um, he knows how to raise though. So. After when the car got torn up, uh, you know, Kenny Francis did a really good job. And so the extra time, make sure it was right, get it back on the track. And we went back out there. He just he learned the track. Uh, he took his time, took his patience, was good with other drivers. We left cars coming by. Uh, but when he got out there, he and had three tracks and went out there and raced. You know, I, I thought he did a great job. Now he's with that with that Cup car that they the Hendrick put him in there at at Martinsville. He had basically what I call an all star crew. <laughs> helping him. I mean, an you old all-star you, know, you had Lance McGrew and Kenny Francis yep. and, and Pete Wright. And um, I saw on Sunday they had Jeff Knight, one of the original Rainbow Warriors, mm -hmm. was on doing his pits, uh, doing pit stops for him. So they, I mean, they, they pulled out the, the big boys on them guys. Yeah, no, uh, Lance has been working with them for you know, a few years. And I helped him with the K-9 and Arca, kind of blowing them up and I Well, he, I mean, he, but I, I was impressed with him when he came back out. I mean, he he, he ran some laps and, and and got his feet wet, and I th I think he's you know he he did exactly what what he wanted to do, except he, he didn't quite at the early part of the race get what he wanted out of it. Mm. We gotta crawl before you walk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's, you know, that's part of the federation of Martinsville. So, um, I would say that his teammates, um, you know, I would guess he's on their side as well. So um, that's just part of being at that racetrack. So, um, yeah, looking and, forward to going to a uh, racetrack with him this weekend. This will be second tough start. Oh. Um, so it would be fun to go back uh, to the track where he's been. He has you know, really good success there and a lot more laughs. It's always helped. Right, yeah. So what's what is your favorite track to spot at? Ooh, favorite track to spot at? Um, you know what? I'm going to have to say it's not going to be a, a, a cup track. It's actually going to be a, a next city track. It's Iowa Speedway. Really? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I've been there um, so many times. I've been there since it's, you know, it's debuted, um, you know, back in 2006 or 2007. Um, the, you know, British Pro Cup Tour was going there. Um, I've won there with Trey Riders in a, in a Pro Cup car. I've ran uh, top five with, uh, you know, America, um, Trust, everything that's been out there. And then I actually got my uh, a win with Sam Warner so last year in the for a car. So, hmm. So what what's what's the worst? I mean, there's got to be a place where it's always cold and windy. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely cold and windy at Martinsville this past week. Yeah, past week. Well, I didn't think about that. Mm. 
But isn't it there out at Phoenix, oh, at, in, I don't know if it's the early stages or the late stages of the race, that, sun, sun. Is, that sun is right in the, the spotter's face. stuff do you carry with you up to the tower or the spotter stand? I mean, you guys got backpacks full. I'm sure you probably got batteries and extra radios. Ex you probably got extra hold of everything. And you probably got a little snacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we carry a little bit of everything. I, I might carry more than others. Uh, maybe not. Um, I carry pretty heavy backpacks, pretty big backpacks. Well, so. um, I don't carry a lot of stuff. But I do carry a lot of batteries, spare cables. Uh, I carry a very full uh, other radio electronics. Now, do you guys, do you, uh, can the spotter communicate with the crew chief privately without talking to the driver on the digital channel? Um, that, not digital. Um, we still run digital, but now um, spotters are not allowed to have uh, digital radios to communicate with the crew chief. Um, so that's not something that we do. Um, but we do Now, do you take plenty of food up there with you when you go? Um, yeah, I, I always bring a couple snacks, but uh, yeah, definitely some bottles of water. Um, you know, it all depends on the day. Um, and, uh, you know, I always have a bathroom out. Do they have a bathroom up there? <laughs> um, some snacks, yes. Some snacks, no. Uh, so, <laughs> I didn't think so. Now, who? First of all, guys, uh, we'll give it back to the sweet dude. The next one will be down. There's a couple snacks that you have a bathroom on top, but... Uh, Obviously, when the caution comes out, you only, you, know, you only get some time. <laughs> now, now, I know, the reason I asked you the food question was, I know there's a couple guys that spot up there, and one of them is Steve Barkdahl. I know who you know he is. Who he is. Yep, yep. Uh, he, now, he, he'll grab some food in a minute, so don't make sure you don't... <laughs> don't leave none out? Don't leave none where he can get a hold like of Like a rat? And <laughs> how, I, got, I got some steak in my bag, that way uh, I, only I know where it's at. <laughs> okay, that's good because Steve will, Steve will grab something and, and start eating and then think, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Because <laughs> I've had that happen to me and I wasn't even up there. <laughs> but um, you have you have you run into, uh, I don't know if he's still spotting or not, the legendary fat boy? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, he, uh, he's still been every once in a while. Um, he's been stuff with, uh, with Big Day last year helping out. I think he's about to play a couple times. Yeah, I I got a I got a long history with him too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that sounds good or bad the way you said that. <laughs> well, I, that's right, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you like this. It ain't all been good with him, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he is a good guy, but I mean, you know, he's it, there's only one fat boy in the whole garage and when when you say fat boy, everybody knows who you're talking about. No, no, sure. <laughs> and uh you got a guy like, do, do you work closely with other spotters as far as like Mike Herman? I know Mike Herman's a good friend of mine too. He he does a lot, of, he does spotting for the 17. Do you all work yeah, together Mike, a lot? Yeah, Mike's actually a good buddy of mine. Um, I always give him a hard time because he's still a driver when, uh, when I was spotting to play. So um, there's been a few times a couple of different race, race tracks, but uh, um, Mike's done a good job moving himself up the rank. That guy was out there to work uh, Mike Herman Racing uh, headquarters. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, Lord, Lord headquarters Virginia. now. <laughs> yeah, he. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's uh, you know, we, we, uh, we try to go to baseball games, uh, Snapple Intimidators. We'll go, uh, we'll go check them out. That's what we, uh, we over at uh, MHR yesterday because I got ranked out. So they're, uh, they're actually at a double header today, and I'm, uh, I'm not to get it. So. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, my, I'm I'm good friends with Mike's girlfriend Kelly Kent, and uh, he's a good guy. He's really a good guy. I like I like hanging around, listening to him, and talking with him because he has a love for the sport. There ain't no doubt about it. Oh, for sure. Well, Jason, we appreciate you spending a little time with us tonight, and I'm sorry we kind of he hawed around a little bit with you. We really didn't mean to. But we're glad you were able to come on the show, and hopefully we can get you back here in a few weeks and give us a little update on Richmond and the places that you're going with Jace. I mean, with a chase. Yeah, and hopefully we'll yeah, run into you this weekend. I appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate you guys having me on. If you guys get to Richmond this weekend, definitely look me up. I'll so definitely do it because we're going to be there. We appreciate it, man, and we'll talk to you later. Sounds good, guys. You too. Right, thank Thanks, you. Jason. Bye. So now we're going to have our Langley Speedway corner. This show has been packed, but it's been, it's flows pretty good. It's been, it's been flowing pretty good. It's been a little bit better than what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't expecting it to be, you know, but, uh, hey, it's been fun. Wait a minute now. I done messed up here. What? Imagine that. Man, I can't believe that. No, I didn't. No, I did I thought I did. But I did So we're going to have... In our Langley Speedway corner here, we're going Danny to have Edwards. Danny Edwards Jr. I don't know if he's three, four-time champion at Langley Speedway. I know he's won a few. Well, I thought I had his number yeah. in here. I know he sent it to me. <laughs> well, I tell you what, <laughs> technology is terrible, ain't it? <laughs> I done, I done run into all kinds of problems here. <laughs> You go ahead and carry the show for a minute. <laughs> oh, I got it. Now you just hit send. Just hit the phone button. <laughs> I really don't like him that much. <laughs> oh, you know him better than I do. Hello. Danny Edwards Jr., how you doing? All right, we're doing great. This is uh, Scott, uh, Scott Allen. We got Jack Dotson here. Uh, we got Danny Edwards Jr. I don't know, how many championships have you won at Langley Speedway? Uh, we won five. Five. The only ones won any more than that would be Phil. So I mean, that, that's pretty good company there. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, we wish we had more, but um, we've kind of leveled off here. We're we're trying this year to make a hard run at it, but um, not sure how it's going to work out yet. Yeah. So, Danny, how long have you been uh, been driving, and how did you get started? Uh, well, this will be my thirty first season at Langley. Okay. Good job. Um, I, I actually started um, before that racing motocross. I was a motorcycle racer in the AMA Amateur Series. Did that for a number of years when I was younger, and then uh, and I traded up the cars. And my father, with our company, with our family business, had sponsored some teams at Langley when I was younger and uh, we kind of got watching there and helping with a couple teams and um, and decided to give it a shot. Danny, are you, are you, are you, you said you're looking to run, to, to win the championship again at Langley. Are, are, are there any races that you're going to go to at other tracks and try to be involved with on some other tracks or are you just basically going to stay right there at Langley? Yeah, we're pretty much going to focus uh, on Langley for now. At least you know, through the main part of the season, you know, while Langley's running, you know, their season. As far as any, uh, you know, postseason races, we'll have to kind of wait and see, you know, how that plays out for us. Um, but you know, Langley's got a long season. We got a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, we're a little bit in a hole right now. The first couple races didn't work out too well for us. Um, so you know, we got a little bit of work to do, but um, we're going to keep uh, keep digging. So you got a new car this year, right? I do. We built a new great, uh, Creech car, and I'm um, pretty happy with it. We just uh, can't seem to get any luck right now. Now, are you running Charlie Hyde Motors, too, or are you running? No, I run uh, Junior Keen, builds my engine, and okay. uh, does a very good job on it. You know, I'm really impressed with what uh, what he's done for us. Mm -hmm. So, pretty happy in that department. 
Now, how much do you and Greg share information? Do you guys work as a two-car team, or are y'all sort of two separate teams? Well, I mean, we're, we're running out of the same shop, but, I mean, obviously, you know, he does things, you know, does his own deal, and we do ours. I mean, yeah, I mean, we can get some information from each other, you know, as needed. I mean, I, you know, we do have, uh, you know, programs are, are slightly different. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be kind of hard to kind of duplicate exactly what he has with what we have going on, so... I mean, you know, we, we take a look and, you know, he kind of fills me in on some things and, you know, we try to use some, some of that to the best of our ability, but it, it just doesn't seem to match up with everything we have going and exactly how our car is. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the, the competition out there at Langley, which I have been I have been looking at the, the other tracks, Langley seems to have a great late model car count compared to other tracks. When you look at the competition at Langley, that's got to be some of the best competition around as far as yeah. the late model division. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's always been, uh, you know, it's always been pretty tough, uh, you know, at Langley for, for all the years that I've been racing. So, kind of used to that, you know. We've always had a great field of cars for the biggest part. Um, hmm. And the competition, like you said, has always been tough. You know, at any, any given weekend, I mean, you never know who's going to win, but Except for right now, my brother seems to pretty much have it covered. But, um, you know, everybody works hard, and, you know, there'll be some other people get their shot. Yeah. You, you had, one, you had uh, one of the heavy hitters like Lee Pulliam got there this week. Greg beat him. And uh, it's really good to be able to see a, a national champion like, like him come mm -hmm. out there and run and, and kind of boost Langley up a little bit as far as the competition level. Oh, absolutely. You know, Lee did a great job, I mean, just showing up and, only getting a handful of laps in practice. Um, you know, Tommy Lemon showed up for the first event and did really well, sat on the pole and you know, had an unfortunate wreck there that took him out. But, um, you know, with a little bit of practice, these guys came in and, and have run well. And there's been a lot of, you know, outside guys or, you know, not regulars that have come in and run good. And, you know, especially like in the Hampton Heat, the big race been won by um, some outsiders the last couple of years. So things have changed. You know, Langley, you know, in years past was, a very difficult track to get a hold of and to drive. It's not like that as much anymore. Um, I think with the setups and the new technology with the cars, a lot more information is available, track packages, mm. things of that nature. There's a lot more technical uh, technical aspect of it that people have. And you know, obviously, when you take someone like uh, Lee Pulliam, has got a great program no matter where he goes. Um, you know, Langley is just another racetrack too. You know, So it's not that... It's not as difficult as it once was to, to show up and run well if you've got your program together. Now you've you you ran some uh, back in the day, I guess, nationwide or Bush Series races. Mm -hmm. Now you've got th this new late model division, the Cars Series. Are, are there any thoughts of you trying to go run some of those races uh, later on or whatever? Um, you, you know what? Like I said, that's kind of up in the air at this point. With with my situation, like I said. It's, you know, I've been doing it for 31 years, and, uh, you know, I'm not fooling anyone. I'm not uh, not going to make a living at doing this. You know, we do have a, a family business that I'm in charge of taking care of, and uh, that takes a lot of our time. And so, you know, I've got three three kids, uh, one in college that plays college football, and, and two younger that do a lot of, you know, activities of sports. So I like to stay a little closer to home, um, make sure that, you know, I'm available to enjoy as much of that as I can. Um, you know, like I said, I've had my time, but, um, you know, I still enjoy racing, still enjoy building cars and trying to be competitive, and I think we could still do it. Uh, but as far as getting out and doing a tremendous amount of traveling, you know, we've done a lot of that over the years, in the early years, not so much in recent years. But, um, yeah, I, we'll probably kind of stay close to home. Maybe we'll try to hit a few races at the end of the season if things are going well for us. But, like I said, we'll wait, wait to see how that plays out. So, Danny, who, who stood out back in the day? I, I, I used to help Barry Strathman back in the day. Who was the guy that you that was the hardest to race with, that just raced you real hard back in the day? I mean, I, I kind of miss those old days when you had Bubba Adams and, and Roger Sawyer and Bugs Harefield and Eddie Johnson. That was the toughest guy to race with. <laughs> you just named a bunch of them right there. They were all tough. I mean, they were all tough competitors. Yeah, I mean, those those guys that you just named were definitely tough. I mean, as far as stuff to race against, I mean, everybody raced good. Um, you know, there was a lot, always a lot of, uh, you know, 
respect there mm-hmm. that I had for a lot of, you know, a lot of those guys, and I think I earned a lot of respect um, you know, from them as well. So, you know, the old thing is, you know, you, you race each other, you know, you're going to race someone as they race you, and you know, I never really had any major issues with anybody, but you know, that doesn't mean they weren't tough racers. You know, there was a lot of them to come through, and um, a, lot of great, a lot of great drivers that I raced with and learned a lot of stuff from, and and, and one that I learned a tremendous amount from um, watching and, and racing with uh, when I first started in was, you know, Phil Warren. Uh, he was always so smooth and, and really could make a lot out of uh, out of nothing and always, uh, you know, at the end of the race, always had himself in position to win no matter what happened. And, uh, and I always thought that, uh, you know, I was always really impressed with that. So yeah. his style, um, you know, always lit for being successful. And uh, showing up at the end of the race and, and winning, so he didn't do it. He didn't win all his races with aggression. He won it with uh, being smart, being smooth, and uh, and I kind of like the way he did things. Yeah, and he he did a lot with with little or nothing too. That's right. Yeah. So now with uh, how you, we looked at the season so far, you said you're kind of dug yourself a little hole there. How has, the, how has the season gone, and what, what all has been taking place? Well, the first event, we, we built the new car, and we, we, were, um, yeah, we, we got a little late. We had a little late start, so we, we worked a uh, tremendous amount of hours getting it ready. Didn't really get much test time. Got a few laps on it before the opening event, and, and things were looking good. I mean, we had a good thing going, and uh, on the start of the, uh, start of the race, uh, the leader missed the shift uh, from, I guess, what's happening. We got kind of bunched up there and knocked the front end out and knocked the, the, the hood up and bent the bumper up and everything and kind of messed it up. But we had to come in and pit and make some repairs and just couldn't recover from that. You know, from that point on, once they went green, we went you know we went green for 97 or 93 laps or something. And I think we ended up finishing seventh. We kind of salvaged the finish out of it. Um, this last week, uh, you know, we ran the twin races and. We missed the setup a little bit uh, for the first race. We were a little too free. Ended up kind of salvaging, getting a, you know, getting a seventh place out of that, and made some good adjustments at, that, uh, at the break and you know for the second race. And we were doing pretty well. And early in the race, we were able to you know, take the turn and restart and, and advance our position and making good gains. And uh, car underneath, you know, car on the inside of us slipped up, got into the left rear of us, turned us around, and put us in the wall. So kind of messed things up for us again. So. Um, just a lot of work here in the early part of the season, a little bit of uh, misfortune in the wrong place at the wrong time, I guess. So um, we'll, we'll recover. We, you know, we've got a hard-working team, and you know, we'll get it together and, and uh, make good with it. Now, are, are you still very – I remember back in the day when you ran the, the Bush Series then, I, I remember people saying that they were impressed with you, how, how uh, chassis-wise or knowledge-wise you were. Do you still get into the chassis of the of – the, the springs and shocks of what's in the car, or, or do you still have your hands in the setups of the car? Oh yeah, pretty much all of it. Do uh, you know most of the fabrication on the car, the building, um, you know, you know all the setup work as well, build the shocks. Pretty much do, do pretty much all of it. You know, with some help, and I've got some great guys, and I do have a crew chief this year. Um, that, uh, that he had helped my brother in the past, John McMaster. So that's been a big help for me to help relieve. Uh, some of those duties that I can kind of put off uh, to him and uh, you know, also have another eye watching you know, the car while I'm driving and you know, have some, some other input. And that, that's where I was lacking. Um, you know, I needed some experience in that, in that part of it mm-hmm. uh, to have someone help me make some decisions you know, while I was on the track. And, you know, I can't see everything from the seat uh, to see how we're stacking up with everyone else. And right. um, you know, having someone that can really analyze things from a different perspective so that's going to be something that's going to help us a lot. Uh, is, does it surprise you how much things have changed? I mean, I remember back, we, you know, you didn't want a whole lot of shock travel and the front ends were four inches off the ground. And, and now, you know, you want the thing, you want as much shock travel when you were running very soft springs. And it's just, I love the technology side of it, but I think it's just crazy how how much things have changed. It's like some of the things, the they didn't want you to do back then because they said it wouldn't work. It's kind of what you're doing today. Right. It is, it is strange. I mean, um, technology, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be here. I mean, the, the division has evolved, you know, from the time when I first started, you know, tremendously. So, 
you know, we, when I when I first got into uh, late model stock, I think the first year I ran late model stock was in 1987. Um, and, you know, those had uh, stock snouts on them, and, mm-hmm. I mean, just pretty basic stuff, steel bodies, and, uh, yeah, things have come a long way. It's nice. I mean, um, you know, technology is here, and there's not much, you know, I mean, it's, you, you can't stop it, and obviously I don't think you'd want to stop it. I mean, things are going to evolve, and it's a neat thing. Well, Danny, we appreciate your time tonight and join us in our Langley Speedway section, and uh, we hope to uh, see you out at the racetrack in a couple weeks, and uh, good luck to you the rest of the season. Well, I certainly appreciate you having me. All right, we appreciate your time. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, Danny. Thank, thank you. Well... All in all, I think we had a good show. Oh, I think it was one of our <laughs> better ones, I think, as far as I'm concerned. I think we we had a cross-section of everything this time. We did, and mm-hmm. it went fairly smooth. So we had a good show, and thank you guys for, for hanging in there and watching us. The show was a little long. Uh, we're up on an hour and 20 minutes, but uh, but it was. It was good to have our Lingling Speedway section. And Danny, five-time champion. Danny's been around for a long time, and he's had some opportunities and had some good opportunities uh, in the Bush Series a few yep. times. And, and him and Greg, I think, shared a – all pro or yeah all pro car uh, for a couple of years there and we raced with them back in the day and 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 they were always fierce competitors honestly um i think in, in the beginning i think they had a little turmoil like between because I, I know some of the team members back then they were like i don't care who out we run but we got outrun you know the sister car that was all that mattered uh, uh, but uh, they did and it, and it was pretty neat and their dad really supports it and uh very family team there per se um, he's uh i didn't know i didn't realize he'd been around as long as he had because you know I, when I, he said 30 some years i got to thinking because i knew he wasn't hadn't started too much longer before i had gotten over at langley and then that was in 89 i think we uh well no 90 something like that when we got over there so he'd been over there a few years and uh and we had a lot of good guys back there in those days like i said we had you know elton had just kind of left and gone to the bush series a few years prior to that you had Roger Sawyer and Bubba Adams, and uh, I used to love watching those guys. Bugs Harefield, I mean, you talk about a character. Yeah. Bugs is a character. Uh, Bubba Adams, a national champion. Uh, it's so funny. It's, it, it, if somebody would wreck him one week, Fuzz, his dad, would love to fight. Bubba would come over and say, that was just racing. But next week, <laughs> when Bubba stuffed you in the wall, don't be mad. <laughs> Because he would say, that was just racing, man. That's just right. like last week. Kind of kind of like you do up at the arena races. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we enjoyed the night. Hope you uh, don't don't forget to check us out on YouTube. Yes. Uh, Go to YouTube, like our videos, please, and uh, comment. Tell us what you think about our show. And we'll pick somebody, and we'll give this to We'll post on Facebook our YouTube channel on Scott Allen, or you can just Google Jack Dotson Racing Insider News with Scott Allen, uh, and it'll come up in YouTube. But please go there and like our videos, share them, uh, make a comment, tell us what you think about the show, and we'll pick one person. And like I said, if you want it devalued, let us know. We'll autograph it and send it to you. And we enjoyed it tonight, and hopefully everything will be back to good times again next week. We headed off to Richmond for the race this weekend. Yeah. And, uh, so we'll see you next week. We'll give you an update on that. And we'll be back with our Langley Speedway seg- segment again next week. Do we know who's going to be in Langley Speedway? Not yet. Not yet. I haven't got, gotten that list yet. But uh, we'll know something about it. And uh, we'll put it out and let, it, let everybody know who it is. Right. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. And good night. See you next week.